Welcome back to our problem. This is the second part of our two runners that are running towards each other with a constant velocity. And in the first part, I just set up the problem and I talked to you about how do we set up these graphs where they had a, both had an acceleration of zero, but they were running at constant velocities. The red one was running with a, a positive constant velocity of 15 meters per second, and the blue one was negative 5 meters per second. And so they were running in opposite directions. And the, the, the blue one is negative because it's going to the left, and the red one is positive because it's going towards the right. And we said that they're going to meet uh, at some point in time, and they're going to share that time. When they meet that intersection, they're going to share that time, and they're going to share that position on the actual graph here. So that was the conceptual application of this. Now let's actually calculate the equations and figure out uh, where they're going to meet and how long it's going to take them to meet there. So what is our formula for uh, just average velocity if we're talking about a constant velocity? I'm going to write that out here. Uh, and I'm going to do the, the calculations here on the side. So our formula here uh, for the average velocity, I'm going to do the red one here just to show you, is going to be delta x, the displacement, over the time, delta t. Okay, so delta means what? It means final minus initial, and I'm just going to write here over time, okay? And that's going to be velocity of runner A, average velocity. Uh, because t initial is zero, so I just wrote that over time. So we know that the initial position is what? Well, this runner is going to start here, and that's going to be zero uh, for this runner. And this, so I'm going to I'm going to be able to take that term and make it equal to zero. So I can also just say that the velocity of A is simply going to be the final position, the average velocity of A over the time. So I'm going to call that equation one just to clarify. I'm going to keep these nice and clean. So the velocity of A is final position over time. Okay. So let's take a look at velocity B same exact equation, okay, so I'm going to call that equation 2, just to keep it clean, okay, we always want to number our equations because we need to know how many unknowns we have to get. So we're going to have the same general equation here, it's going to be delta x over delta t. Only we have something a little bit different this time. Our x final is going to be the same position. That's where they're going to meet. But this time, the initial position is 100 for this blue runner. And this is all going to be over time. OK. And so you know he's starting here at 100, wherever he's starting. Let's just say he starts here. Actually, I should have made this arrow a little bit longer here. Let's make that's the starting point. Let's just say that they start there and there. So there's your 100 meter position right there. I mean, technically, if you were doing this, um, you know, if you wanted to be completely precise, then you would put your your positive x y exactly like right there or wherever it was. You would say that's the zero point. I'll just put it there just so we can be clear that that's where my x is starting. Uh, that's my zero position. Okay, so we've got these two equations. Now what do we do? What do we do with this? Well, uh, we have to begin our substitution to find out what variables they have in common. So what are they going to have in common? We talked about this before. What do they have in common? They share the position, the final position, and the, the final time. So that's where we're going to go with this. So I'm going to take equation one here. I'm just going to rewrite it out just so you can clearly see this. And uh, I know that it, this is going to be uh, the, the average velocity of A is the, the final position over the time. So I want to find the average position I'm going to solve for that, and that's going to equal the average velocity of A times the time of A. Okay, so just keep that in your mind. And let's take a look at equation two again. I'm going to rewrite this one. I'm going to say that x minus 100 is going to be the average velocity of B times the time here. And so there's a reason I'm doing this, because I'm going to substitute equation 1 into equation 2, uh, because I know right here, right, I know that the final position equals the average velocity of A times the time. So I'm going to circle this in a different color here, green. And so I'm simply just going to plug that into here. 
And uh, what I'm going to do when I plug that into there is I'm going to I'm going to solve for the time, right? So if I have that in there now, if I go one into two, uh, I get my new equation here, which is going to be the average velocity of a times the time minus 100 equals the average velocity of b times the time. And now I need to go about finding the time. I'm just going to combine my variables. So I'm just doing this symbolically. It's nothing that crazy. It's just simple algebra. Velocity of a times the time here. I'm going to subtract this over here. So minus the velocity of b times the time equals 100 because I'm bringing the 100 over here. Okay, And I'm simply going to solve for t. Now I'm not putting any numbers in here simply because I want you to learn how to do this without numbers. So those of you who are going to move on to uh, AP Physics without calculus, with calculus, or if you're in college and you're doing this symbolically, the answers are always going to be uh, much more clean if you do them symbolically and you're going to be better at you're going to become much better at algebra if you do it so factor out the t so the time is simply going to be uh, 100 over va minus vb now notice i did put in here i did put uh, the 100 that that is a variable that could have just been delta x the whole time but or x final position i could have just left it there but uh, that's fine i just i just left it there um, now we can plug it in so i'm going to plug in for the time so time equals what 100 over the velocity of a which we know is 15 i'm going to put there a positive 15 Okay, like this, minus, and I know that my other velocity is negative 5. This is where the signs are important with the velocity, okay? Got to have the signs correct or this is not going to work. So we have 100 over 20. So I end up with t equals 5 seconds. So we kind of solved the, the second part first. We found out how long it takes them to meet. They're going to meet in five seconds. Okay, So they're going to meet in five seconds. Actually, it asks me up here. It says, where do they meet? How long does it take? Well, sometimes we need to solve those other variables first. So I solve for time. I could have solved for the position first, too, but you know, just decided to do it this way. So my time is five seconds. So they're going to meet there at five seconds. So it worked out kind of nice here, actually, on my graph. I uh, actually, when I picked the squares, I actually picked one, two, three, four, five. Kind of worked out nice. So look at that. They met in five seconds. Now, let's let's figure out where do they meet. Where do they meet? Well, let's take a look at that. I can use either equation. What does equation one give me? Equation one says the position is the average velocity of a times the time. So let's just check both of these, okay? So equation one, again, the position is the average velocity of a times the time. So equation one, the final position is the average velocity of a times the time. Okay, And what does that give us? What's the average velocity of a? It's positive 15 times 5 seconds. And that gives me a position, a final position of what? 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 5 is 25, so that's 75 meters as a final position that they meet. Okay, Does that make sense? Let's just think about this for a second. Does that make sense? Well, was the red runner running faster? Yes, he was, right? So that you know that they're going to meet past the 50-yard line, right? They're going to meet past that 50-yard line. So that makes complete sense. They met at 75 yards. Now. Here's another way we can check this. Let's look at the second equation here. I have x minus 100 equals the average velocity of b times time. Let's take a look at that. So, number two. x minus 100 equals the average velocity of b times the time. So, if we did this correctly with the time of 5, it's not going to matter how we do this. So I can say x equals the average velocity of b times the time plus 100. Okay, 
So let's just try it out. Let me extend this page here a little bit. So x equals the average velocity of b is negative 5 times the time, which is 5 plus 100. Okay, so that's going to give us negative 25 plus 100 meters, or we're going to end up with the same final position of 75 meters on that football field and that is exactly where they're going to meet and we confirmed it in both ways we confirmed it with the uh, the vel average velocity of runner A and the average velocity of runner B so hopefully you can see in this problem we've looked at this from many different angles we started out by looking at uh, conceptually like what's going on with this speed versus this one this one is a larger magnitude than this we plotted the acceleration graph versus time. We plotted the velocity graph versus time. We plotted the position versus time graph. We saw where they intersected. And then we went back and we actually calculated the, the, we calculated the final uh, positions using our average velocity equation. And it's just a very simple equation. It's delta x over delta t. And we knew that the initial position of, of runner A, or the runner A, the red one, was zero. So it's just final position over time. And then runner B, uh, we said that the final position minus the initial, which was 100 over time. And then at, at that point, we just went ahead and solved. Uh, we plugged in equation 1 into equation 2. We solved for time. They share the time, right? So once they share the time, we went back and we checked it out in both equations. And both equations verified that the two runners met at a final position of 75 meters. All right, thanks for watching this video. Check back for more on intersections involving physics and 1D kinematics. Talk to you soon.